Michelle Marie Domino from Zippy's Designs and Decoposh Rocket Girls and I'm back with the glass cutting board that I got from the Dollar Tree. This is my second video. In my last video, my first video, I did the reverse decoupage, which means I decoupage on this side using the iron-on technique, but in that video, I used a paper napkin. In this video, I'm going to be using a piece of fabric instead. It's a little bit different than a paper napkin, but I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, let's get started. All right, so I found these in the Dollar Tree. They're by like where the dish towels are and the oven mitts. They're on a lower shelf. I went to a bunch of different Dollar Trees and that's where they were. So look there, look in the glassware. They might be there too. Okay, they're wrapped in plastic, which is very nice because they're more protected. And on it, there is a label. On the label, it says cutting board. I'm telling you this because I'm going to be using it as a cutting board because that's how it's marked. I'm not sure if this would do well under heat, like a pot that comes off the stove or something that comes out of the oven. I'm not really sure if that's going to work with this, if it's going to be safe. So I'm gonna use it as a cutting board. Okay, so um, you're gonna take the plastic off. I love that they come wrapped in plastic. I love that I don't have to get that little label off. That's always such a pain in the neck. Okay. So the first thing is we're going to remove these little silicone feet, okay? I have other feet we're going to be putting on, but if I left the feet on, it would be a lot harder to decoupage these because I'm going to be using the iron-on technique, so I need this to be completely flat. Okay, after you remove the little silicone feet, you're going to see there's probably going to be a little bit of glue residue. Okay, you want to take that off, wash it, give it a little bit of scrubbing until the glue is off. And now we can go on to our first step. So when we're decoupaging on glass, we like to have a good clean surface to work with. So for this, you should take some alcohol and just wipe down the side that you're going to be decoupaging on. And since we're doing a reverse decoupage, this is the side that we cut on, it's the bumpy side, and this is the flat side. So that's where you wanna do your alcohol wipe and then just wait for it to dry. Okay, on to the next step. Once it's all dry, we're going to go ahead and put two coats of Mod Podge on. Now, before you put the Mod Podge on, you can do the same thing we did with the other cutting boards, is you can do some glitter spray first. So if you want your cutting board to be glittery, you wanna do some glitter, you can use this by Krylon. You can also use the Mod Podge and you just wanna do, um, probably just one coat of each would be okay. If you decide not to do the glitter, then we can just go straight on and do the Mod Podge and I'm using the satin. Now, as you can see, I put some tape on this that's actually put on the side that we're cutting. I did that because when I did my last video, after I put the glue on, I got a little bit confused because the glue left a little bit of texture. And this has texture, so I thought, you know, one of the best tips I can give you now, put a piece of tape before you put the glue. Okay, so we're going to be using satin and a brush. I'm going to do two coats. I'm going to let it dry between each coat. So you're just gonna go on like this. What I'm going to tell you, as I usually do, because we're using the iron-on technique, just make sure you get the edges really good. Okay, I'm gonna finish putting this glue on. I'm gonna be right back. Okay, so I did my two coats of the satin Mod Podge and I let it dry. So now I can get ready to do the iron-on. Now I am going to tell you, since I know that this is the side I'm going to be decoupaging, I can now take this little piece of glue tape, this is painter's tape, off. Okay, so now we know that is the side that has the glue. We can get ready to put it on. All right, we're going to be putting parchment on the top because we want to protect the iron and we want to protect the fabric. All right, this is the piece of fabric that I chose. It's so pretty, I really like it. Um, I found an area of the fabric that I really liked. So I cut it kind of to size. Of course, it's going to be a little bit bigger and I'm going to line it up like that so I'm ready to iron. So since I'm doing a reverse decoupage, I just want to remind you, this is why it has to be upside down, okay? Because once you flip it around, then it's gonna be right side up. That means your image is going to be the darkest that way. Okay, 
So I have my little iron, which is here. This iron is made by Cricut. I just turned it on, so it's going to take a couple more, maybe another minute or so to warm up. Um, this is a crafting iron. Um, this is good if you do a lot of ironing on. Um, my sister got me this for Christmas, and I've used it a lot. I really recommend it. And you don't have to use this. You can use a regular iron. Um, keep it at like a medium cotton setting and absolutely no steam. Um, water and decoupaging just do not mix. So you don't want to, oh, it's ready. You don't want to use any water, okay? So see, it lights up green so I know I'm ready to go. And also, this is how you turn it off and on. So the more you have, like by the time you get up to the third green light, that means it's at its hottest setting. Okay, we're ready to go. And it sits in this really cute little silicone tray. I love it. Okay, so I've got my fabric upside down. Remember, reverse decoupage on top of the glass. And I'm going to take my baking parchment and I'm going to put it down like that. And now we're going to start to do the iron on. Okay, so I'm going to move the iron back and forth. I'm kind of feeling for where the edges are because the fabric is a little bit more opaque. So I can't really see, but I can feel it. So I know I'm getting the whole piece of fabric. So we're going to be moving it around like this. Okay. Um, probably not too long. You don't want to leave the iron um, too long in one spot uh, because it really, it does get hot. Like you would think it wouldn't. And you would think because this little iron, it does, it gets hot just like a regular iron. The nice thing about it is that it's small. Um, so it's easy to work with. And my um, studio crafting area is always a big mess. So whenever I have to do an iron on, I always have to clear everything off. So I have a spot to do it. And with this, I can leave it on my crafting table just about all the time, right? What I should do is I should just clean up my crafting area. Okay, so let's take a look and see how it is. Okay, I'm going to use this. You know, this protects the fingers. I'm going to peel it off. Okay, let's take a look. I'm going to check. Okay, it looks like I have a little spot here. I'm going to have to do a little bit more ironing. That's okay. Here too. That's why the fabric is a little more okay. Okay, let's go back in and iron it some more. Um, the fabric is a little more opaque, so you can't see. So you wanna make sure you get all the corners and the edges. So I'm just gonna go in there, and again, I'm kind of feeling it with the iron to make sure. And when you do fabric, fabric is not, it doesn't adhere as quickly as the napkin view. I'm going to tell you that right off the bat, that the fabric takes a little bit more to get it to adhere to the glass. But it's beautiful. I mean, it's definitely worth the effort. I and mean, the fabric does a really nice job. And I know I have a lot of crafters out there that like to work with fabric. When I said I was going to do one with fabric too, the cutting board, I got a very nice response um, from those crafters who said, yeah, let's do fabric and not just napkins. So I'm like, okay, we can do that. Okay, let's take a look. All righty. All right, let's check those edges again. Okay, that's better. Okay, it looks like we did a pretty good job. Okay, so now I'm going to let this cool off. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put another coat of Mod Podge on top of this. And I'm going to iron it again. I'm doing that because this is going to give me an extra sealant on top of the um, fabric. So it's going to last better. It's going to be stronger. Um, I'm also, while I'm off, I'm going to also be trimming this off. And I'm going to tell you why. The first ones I did, I put the coat on top of the napkin and I, excuse me, on top of the fabric and I found it frayed a lot. So I'm going to cut this off first and then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to put the decoupage glue on it. I think this is too hot. Let me see. Okay, I'll do a little bit. It's not too bad. Um, here's my scissor. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off first. Yeah, I when I did my last, my first couple, I just found it frayed so much. If I cut it um, and then did my last layer of Mod Podge. Okay, when I'm cutting it, I don't know if, if Art can get this. 
I kind of have it at an angle and I can feel the glass with my scissor. That's how I know I'm going far enough. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this and I'm gonna be right back. Okay, I'm back with my glass cutting board. I trimmed all the edge as you can see and I put another coat of the Mod Podge like I said, I was going to right on top of the fabric and it's dry so I can iron it once again. So I'm going to put it underneath the parchment paper. This is baking parchment because that can take the heat. And I'm going to go back in with my iron. Okay. And I'm just going to press it down a little bit. Now I'm going to give you um, another little tip about doing fabric. I did fabric cookie plates too. And I found the edges, like no matter what I did, I still found I had some fraying. So when I'm done, I trim it, I add a little bit of Mod Podge on my finger, and I co I, I don't know, I kind of go around the edge. So if there's any loose pieces of fabric, little frays, little threads, I kind of glue them down with my finger. And there's another thing I want to tell you about um, fabric on glass that I found is different than napkins is, it seems like it takes a little longer for the fabric to adhere to the glass. So after you do this, and even after you do your second coat, just leave this glass plate alone for a few days of the cutting board. Just leave it alone. It just seems like it takes um, extra time than it did with the napkins. Now, even after a few days, I found that some of the napkin, um, excuse me, some of the fabric, you can see I work with napkins all the time, um, started to lift. I took the E6000 glue on a toothpick and I tucked it in any of the spots where it looked like the fabric was still lifting and you wait like 48 hours and then the plate was perfect. Okay, this feels like it's cooled off. Let's take a look. That is really pretty. I think that is a very good choice of fabric. That is lovely. Okay, so now we have to put the feet back on because we're going to be using this as a cutting board. And since we're using it as a cutting board, we have to have the silicone feet so it doesn't slide around. Okay, so to replace the feet I took off, I have um, cabinet bumpers. Um, we did some work in our kitchen and we put these on the cabinets, um, the doors and the drawers so that when you move them back and forth, they don't slam. And these work really good for feet. In fact, they're even a little bit bigger. Okay, so you wanna pull them off don't touch the sticky part because if you do, they tell you you can't use it again. So you can't move it. If you don't like where you placed it, you can't move it either. So we're going to do that. Okay, we're putting one in each corner. And by the way, you get a ton of these. So if you want to do a lot of glass plates, if you order the little cabinet bumpers, you get a lot. Okay, and there you go. Very, very pretty. Depending upon what size you want to look at, they look really nice. You can put it down on the counter. This would make a great gift. You can give somebody cheese and crackers or maybe some fruit. It would make a really nice um, hostess gift, a good gift for um, a birthday, um, a bridal shower, Mother's Day, lots of different things that you can do or you can use them for and give them as gifts. And of course, the choices of fabric is, you know, even beyond napkins. I can't even go into a store that sells fabric. I want to get everything, and I don't even do that much work with fabric. Okay, so that's video number two. This was my first video where I used the paper napkin. Okay, as a matter of fact, I painted the back. I want to show you that because I didn't finish it in the last video. So I did paint the back of that white, and then I did do sealant on top of it, and it really came out pretty. I like the way that is. Okay, so if you didn't see my first video on napkins and you like to use napkins, then please watch that video. I'll put the link down the bottom so you'll be able to get to it. Um, please give my video a thumbs up. I hope that you like it. Hit the little bell so you'll get a notification every time I put a new video on. So that means please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Decoupage DIY with Joan Marie Domino. I want to thank my sponsor, Vippy's Designs, and my very, very good friends. They help me with a lot of different products that I use. And I want to thank my camera guy, Art. He does such a great job. This is Joan Marie Domino. Thank you for watching my video.